Hello, welcome to episode 15 of Your Brain on God, 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 God. In this episode, we are talking about gratitude, the power of being grateful, the difference that it makes in our lives, and how it actually has a psychological, even a physical benefit and a relational benefit to what we do, who we are, to our day-to-day lives. So, hope you enjoy this episode on being addicted to gratefulness. Come on now. Come on. Welcome back, little boggies. Hello. Welcome back, Welcome boggies. Back. It is episode 15 of Your Brain oh on God 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 God, 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 God. And oh my goodness, did we miss you. Yes, we did. Yeah. My yes. heart uh, has had a gap in it for some time now. We didn't have an episode last week and it brought me great strain. Hmm. The pain. The, the strain. Pain. It honestly, I didn't want to deal with it. The to disdain. be honest, I wanted to run. I wanted to run away. I wanted to escape the pain of not communicating with you guys and at least one directional <laughs> <laughs> communicating to you guys. Yeah. <laughs> we're not communicating with really because I guess we're not that big yet. But to get, we have comments. Well, yeah. I, no, that's not should, actually. That's not actually. If you're true. listening, leave uh, send us messages on Instagram or something. Yeah, we feel you know, lonely over ask here. Ask questions. Give us some ideas on topics you want to hear us talk about, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Or yeah. if you find something really interesting that you think we'd be interested in, let us know. Yeah, I love weird stuff. I love stuff. looking into weird things. <laughs> in fact, I was watching a, a TV show recently, and I the there was a, a, an episode where this person encountered this huge African elephant, and they couldn't run. You know, they like had to be still, and this person who was an expert was was guiding them through it like don't move move very slowly go this direction move wait, like wait. this are you saying that someone put this guy in front of an african elephant to teach him how to deal with them no it was a it was in a show this guy who was with them an elephant just came okay just okay. irrelevant okay <laughs> <laughs> anyways i was curious can you outrun an elephant <laughs> you wanted to so i looked it up and no you cannot outrun an elephant are you serious so if you find an elephant specifically well African elephants are faster, they're bigger, and uh, they have never really been tamed, I think. I think the smaller ones have been tamed, but the bigger African elephants, I think they were not, haven't been tamed. But they well, run like, up to like... The Indian elephants have been tamed? Are those smaller or I something? I think they're smaller. I think like, you know, when you see people riding elephants? Right, right. It's probably not one of the big African ones. Holy. But you can't outrun elephants, so if anybody encounters an elephant, just don't even try. <laughs> don't even try. You have to be friends with it. You have to be kind. Be sweet. Yeah. Kind. If it's uh, you just want to back away. If it's gonna start stamping its feet, flapping its ears, it's not trying to <laughs> display its beauty to you. Right. It's getting angry. Well, I think the best thing to do is probably to go up and touch its trunk. You know, establish trust. Establish trust. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we can try. You could try. You might. You might fail. You know what I've been watching. All Boggies, I'm sure you want to know this. Uh, it's a show on Netflix. I haven't really been watching it because it's such garbage, to be honest. I'm almost <laughs> embarrassed to admit it. It's called Are You the One? <laughs> <laughs> I watched the first episode. You know those shows that it's like, um, they're like dating shows, but it, yeah, basically yeah. they it's a cash prize of a million dollars. They use like all this psychology to find your perfect match or what. I don't know what just happened or whatever. And then you have to find your perfect match. And then if everyone finds their perfect match, according to the psycho- psychological test or whatever, they win $1 million. What? Yeah. So you're trying to find the one, which I don't really even agree with to begin with. And the show got eventually boring and it has to be like full of drama, you know? Yeah. yeah everyone yeah. like, oh, totally. they literally brought them in because apparently they're terrible at relationships. And I was like, I could tell why, you know? And they're going to give them $1 million if they can be in a healthy relationship. No, if they can find the one. So it might not even be, uh, be a person that they like. It has to be according to the psych- the psychology that these people did. <laughs> so they can fake it too? How does that work? Yeah, I don't what know. What if they stay together for the $8 million and they end up breaking up? That's probably what would happen. Dang. Yeah. But don't do it for money, you guys. Why is this? The, the, why, riddle me this. Why is there this weird thing inside of us that loves watching trash? <laughs> like hmm. if you think about like The Bachelor. Right. 
You know, you think about these shows, a lot of these girls, a lot of these guys, they're ridiculous, right? They, they have no class, no couth, <laughs> right? They're dramatic. They're crazy. They, they talk about things that don't matter. They're just trying to find love because it's the one thing that they're after. And it's probably most of it's a show. And we eat it up. We eat it up. Probably because it reminds us of ourselves in some way. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> How is that possible? I don't know. Maybe the uh, maybe the struggles that we see are our own struggles amplified. And we can have compassion for them. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we see ourselves in that person. I don't know. What, like an exacerbated form of like our own insecurity? Or maybe it makes us feel good about ourselves because we don't have those issues. Oh, yeah. I'm not sure. I I have never really watched much of The Bachelor, though I did watch season nine of Married at First Sight. And after I, wa- I did watch the whole season and it was like, for some reason I got sucked in and I was like, whoa, what's going to happen next? But then after that, I was like, I'm done. I can't do another <laughs> one of these. <laughs> or it's like, Jersey, too much stress. it's like Jersey Shore. I used to watch Jersey Shore when I was in high school. You ever heard, you know, yeah, yeah. I know of it. Never watched it. Oh, yeah. It's just trash. They just go out, gym tan laundry, GTL. They get in the gym, they go and tan, they do their laundry, and then they go out clubbing. And the whole goal of their existence is to like hook up with people. And I ate it up, <laughs> Daryl. <laughs> I need to do up. some do some searching, your soul searching as to why you're in. Why I you're know, it up. I know. know. I don't know. I, I don't really watch those shows, but when I do, I can notice myself getting sucked in. Maybe it is because I like watching people just like be stupid or something like that, you know. And right. it does make us feel better that we don't have those problems, or I don't know, the drama gets but for us. For some in. reason, we enjoy watching other people struggle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because yeah, yeah. we like hope a, we hope for resolve. I think I'm I'm hoping resolve is going to come a lot of times. I don't. I'm just I hope curious that, as to how they're going to navigate situations. I hope that the girl fight happens. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that they beat each other up. I don't. I, I got to admit this stuff. I had to confess. I had it. There I had it weighing. Go. The guilt there was weighing go. heavy on me today. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about this. Anyway, but yeah, you guys can think about that if you want. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. Cool. Well, I'm excited to get into the episode today. Yeah, we yeah. are talking about gratitude, gratefulness. Gratitude. Yeah, gratefulness, yes. being thankful for everything. Um, totally changes the way that you live. Um, something that I think I've I developed. Um, well, it is like a it's it's like a state of being. Maybe we could read the definition for you guys about gratefulness. But yeah, we wanted to we wanted to have an episode um, that that could bring thankfulness, different perspective into our lives, mm-hmm. um, especially in the season that we're in right now. It can get v- it's very easy to focus on everything negative that's happening right now. You right. know, oh yeah, uh, in the political sphere, in the COVID sphere, in the relational sphere, in the isolation sphere, the depression, the anxiety sphere. It's like there's there's dark stuff all around us. You know, there's hard mm-hmm. things going on all around us right now, and so we wanted to bring light to actually having a perspective, a mind, um, a, uh, a mind that's full of gratitude. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's full of thankfulness, even for the little things, um, so that we can get out of that that funk or that mindset that it seems like a lot of people are in right now. You know? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, totally. Yeah, I uh, I read a quote. I don't remember who this was by, but it said, "Be grateful for the little things, because one day you may look back and those were the big things." Right. Yeah, that's a sweet thought. It's a sweet. And I think it. You know, it probably rings true more often than we uh, take note of. Right. Yeah, if we're not grateful for if we're not grateful for the little things right now, we'll end up we'll end up seeing them probably as the glory days in the future. Hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and that's often what happens. It's like you're not grateful in the moment, and so because you're not grateful in the moment, gratitude usually comes later. Strangely, and then we're yeah, we're grateful for the past and not grateful for the present. Right. Yeah. Oh, remember the days. You know, what I mean, when it was just like when I was in college or I was in you know I had roommates or you know. Remember the days when we lived here, we did this, or we, you know, we used to go out and do this, you know, remember the days when it wasn't COVID and we weren't locked inside, you know, <laughs> remember yeah, the days yeah. when we could just sit in restaurants without any like masks on or anything like that. And we can get there because we're not grateful for the little things. So, yeah. yeah. And it mm-hmm. keeps us from enjoying the present as much right. when we start, well, when we're not, we overlook the things we could be grateful for today. Yeah. There's a, read the definition, bro. So, uh, gratitude is a 
topic that's often brought up in positive psychology, as you could imagine. Uh, but positive psychology defines gratitude in a way where scientists can measure its effects and thus argue that gratitude is more than feeling thankful. Mm. It is a deeper appreciation for someone or something that produces longer lasting positivity. So a greater, what was it say? A greater what? Uh, a greater Wait, it's a gratitude is more than a than feeling thankful. It is right. a deeper appreciation for someone or something. Someone or something that produces longer lasting positivity. So they're saying that mm. being thankful is being you could be thankful for something, right? But whenever you experience gratitude, gratefulness, mm. it's a deeper appreciation that actually creates longer lasting positivity, right? So, so it's, it's it, not just saying thank you or like just right. thank, being thank It's not even just like a, a momentary thing. It, it lasts. It has yeah, like it actually creates effects. a lingering effect of positivity mm. inside of us. Wow. Right. That That's like similar to a, a definition that, that I read that, that talked about um, gratitude being a state of being. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So it was, it was different than just like a, uh, I don't know, even like just a tool. You know what I mean? That you use. It's like, oh, I'm going to be filled with gratitude. I'm going to have an attitude of gratitude. You know, yeah, yeah. your attitude will determine your altitude, whatever, you know, whatever <laughs> cheesy insert cheesy saying right here about gratitude, you know? Oh my gosh. I have this in my uh, house back home. It says, what if you woke up tomorrow with only the things that you were thankful for today? Uh Oh yeah. Shoot. <laughs> and I always look at, it and I say, whatever, dude, what? it's not even going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh my i was like what anyway but um oh what was i saying oh geez um oh yeah it's like a it's a state of being when you when you're actually uh gratitude it, like you said it has it has lingering effects when we actually step into gratitude or we practice gratitude it actually changes the state of our mind neurologically mm -hmm. it changes yeah. the hormones in our body it affects yeah it affects our brain it affects like how our whole entire nervous system runs you know what i mean it affects yeah. our immune system it affects all these things and it actually becomes a a state of being you know which is which is crazy and that's what this guy i think his name's alex corb or something like that it was talking about in this on this website he he was saying that that when we when we start practicing um a gratitude when we start uh, aligning ourselves with that it creates a permanent state of being like where our mind actually starts to attach to the gratitude that we're having or experiencing, and then it starts thinking through gratitude. So it's almost like a right, yeah. a, a lit launching point or like a catalyst point for uh, for positive being. Yeah, I yeah. was reading the, the the synapses that are created, you know, in, within our brain on the neurological level. Whenever we think a certain way, it it creates a pathway in our brain to continue down that route, right? Mm -hmm. So. Whenever we're going down negative pathways, it becomes much more easy and way more natural to be going down that pathway. Right. And what this was reading, I think it was on the same article that you're probably re referencing. It was saying that those synapses are created that strengthen that gratitude pathway, that mm -hmm. pathway of positive um, thankfulness and being appreciative. And that positive effect gets stronger and stronger the more right. that we do it. And the right. easier it becomes to be grateful, the more that we do it. Right. And it's actually changing our brain. Yeah. By being thankful, by being grateful, by yeah. appreciating and practicing gratitude, our brain is actually being changed to go down that pathway right. more easily and more often. Right. Yeah, cuz you have you have neural pathways inside mm -hmm. your brain that go a, a certain way, right? And I think Caroline Leaf talks about this, right? Like every time you have a thought it creates a like almost like a divot, like yeah, a river, yeah. like a two banks, you know what I mean, that are on the sides and it creates a flow for a river for your brain to actually think. Yeah. So the more that we allow or sit in negative thoughts, the more that it creates neural pathways that are actually set in their place and the more that your thoughts become fixed in their course towards either the negative or towards the positive, mm -hmm. right? And so she kind of talks about reorienting your brain and, and yeah, changing- rewiring your brain. 
brain. Rewiring. I think a book called Rewiring Your Brain. Yeah, Rewire Your Brain. And that's what, that's what that same guy talks about as well, is that we can actually rewire our brain through thankfulness, through gratefulness. He wrote the book like Grateful Brain or something like that. Through, through gratefulness, we can rewire our brain to actually create those neural pathways mm-hmm. that, that um, have a proclivity towards positive thinking, towards right, positive yeah. being. Yeah. So now it's like, it's like, it starts out with, okay, I'm just going to start being thankful for certain things in my life. But then as you continue practicing it, it literally starts to change your brain where, where positivity, I guess, becomes a lifestyle. You know, right, what I mean? or yeah. thankfulness becomes mm-hmm. a lifestyle or just becomes a part of who you are. You become not just like, you know, I'm just, I guess, conceptually thankful. You know what I mean? It's like, no, my being is thankful. You know what I mean? Right, the fullness yeah, yeah. of who I am is thankful for, for life, for, for what's going on, for people uh, around me. Like, I'm just thankful to be here, you know? Yeah. yeah. You were mentioning earlier that it releases serotonin and mm-hmm. dopamine, oxytocin, like the experiencing gratitude and gratefulness right. starts releasing those, um, those hormones in our body. Dopamine with- and serotonin. Dopamine and serotonin. And those are the things that help us feel good and happy and mm-hmm. excited. And whenever we we can actually trigger those things in our body by practicing gratefulness. Right. It's like you could take a a hit of gratefulness. Take a hit of, <laughs> <laughs> that'll be a headline on this one. Hit of gratefulness. <laughs> you ever, have you ever? <laughs> never mind. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to hit a fat. I'm just kidding. <laughs> a fat dose of gratefulness. A fat dose of I gratefulness. I need some gratitude. I need a big dose of gratitude right now. Yeah. <laughs> Get me out of this phone. I didn't. I didn't know what I had permission to say in that moment. Yeah. I was gonna say smoke a doobie of gratefulness. Oh anyway, my God. <laughs> just roll that up and smoke <laughs> on some gratitude. Smoke on some. Gr- I'm sorry for anyone. Get all the things that you can be grateful for, put them together, roll them up, and just smoke on that gratitude. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's unreal. Jeez. That is so funny. But but yeah, that it. Those are the same. Those are you know. It, it's funny, but those are the same hormones that are released when you are doing drugs. Right. You know Those are the things Dope- that get us addicted to drugs. Yes, and, is that feeling? And yeah, like dopamine, we naturally can start getting addicted. To dopamine, you mm-hmm. know, um, yeah, you're not addicted to the drug necessarily. You're addicted to the hormones exactly. that are getting produced in excess, right, throughout your body, and then you become addicted to that experience, you know. So, in a way, we can change our minds to start getting addicted to gratefulness. Wow, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe that's what we call this episode: addicted to gratefulness. Addicted to you know? gratefulness. <laughs> where where you just become so thankful for everything so grateful for everybody in your life for every little thing and you're just you become addicted you need it, you know what i mean it's mm. no longer like oh i'm just trying to be grateful even in this hard thing like what if it actually became man i, I need to be grateful you know what i mean it's like right. i'm fiending to be thankful because for it feels somebody good yeah it feels good to be grateful mm-hmm. yeah it feels good to be grateful yeah that's so true yeah that's awesome and the the other side, not just the psychological benefits that come from being grateful, there are mm. also the physical benefits because when we're, when we're grateful, studies show that people who practice gratitude or just have a general, uh, a more grateful position towards life, posture towards life, mm. experience stress less often and also in smaller doses. So they don't get as stressed as easily. Right. They're more resilient to stress. And there are the effects of stress on our physical body actually can tear us apart from the inside out yeah there's been studies that show uh, i was reading up earlier that there was like 20 they had i don't remember the time period but they had all these people practice just writing things down that they were grateful for and like 20 percent of them showed a or the no the mean difference was like 23 percent increase of being resilient to stress yeah so even just being resilient to stress by 23 percent can make a big difference in the way that we carry out our lives Totally. that's like a quarter, a quarter of the stress that we would be feeling is gone. Yeah. How much of a difference would that make? That's yeah. a big chunk. And yeah, lifting 75 pounds rather than a hundred. That's a big difference. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so practicing the gratitude and gratefulness actually has a physical benefit because it's going to help our immune system stay stronger. Our heart's right. going to be healthier because we're not going to be um, uh, carrying all the stress inside of our body. And 
sleep patterns sleep patterns yeah sleep patterns are are better as well Mm -hmm. and do you remember the other physical benefits well it makes you happy you know i mean it makes us happy yeah it makes you happy (laughs) and when you're when you're happy like you, your body thrives on, um, I think this is something Caroline Leaf says too. Your brain is actually wired to be happy. Mm. You know what I mean? Like it's not supposed to be in all of the dark stuff. You know right, what I mean? She's right. a, she's a neuro neurologist. Is that what you call it? A neuroscientist, you know? And she says like the brain actually doesn't do well with negative thoughts. It's actually not created to mm. handle all of this kind of stuff. It's actually handled to, to handle the opposite stuff. You know what I mean? Which is pretty awesome. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. That it's actually, you know, wired. I don't want to misquote her if, if, <laughs> if that's not true, but <laughs> you know, fact check me on it. But, but the, I, I believe that's what she says is that it's actually wired towards positive thinking. That wow. it actually, that it actually, um, it functions better when we think mm, positively, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm, the synapses mm-hmm. fire quicker. Like everything is is more function. It's a more well oiled machine. Right. Like the cogs are are going better when we're actually thinking when we're actually thinking positively. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So so when your brain is thinking better, obviously your body is going to be working better. Yeah. You know, and if your body's working better, you're going to be a healthier individual yeah. physically. You have more you know? energy as well, and better energy, better mm-hmm. sleeping patterns, your immune system stronger. Mm-hmm. It's like, who wouldn't want those things? Yeah. All I got to do is be grateful. What? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's the drug that keeps on giving. You know what I mean? It's like there's, there's not really any side effects besides the fact that you can get your hopes up and then get hurt. Right. <laughs> well, but you can be grateful for things. But you can even Being be grateful, grateful isn't even about getting your hopes up, I don't think. Because mm-hmm. it's about being grateful for what is. Right. You know, I guess you could be grateful for the future. <laughs> right. I don't, know how would I, I don't know how I'd feel grateful for the future. I don't actually have the future. Right. You know, I guess what I'm saying is, is that thankfulness is like a vulnerable emotion. Mm-hmm. You know, like Brene Brown says, like joy is the most vulnerable emotion, you know, because right. we're always waiting for the next shoe to drop. You know what I mean? When's right. the, when's the pin going to drop? You know, when is it mm-hmm. going to change? When's the chaos going to come again? So I think being thankful, you are being thankful for something that may not last. Right. Yeah, that's true. And so, you know, I mean, like you could be thankful for, um, you know, just like feeling peace. Even this moment, I could be thankful for how I'm feeling in this moment. But then it's like, oh, it's scary to be thankful for something that I don't know if it's going to stay there forever. I'm thankful even for a loved one. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's like, or I'm thank, you know, thankful for my children. It's like, I'm thankful for the relationship I have with them. But what if that doesn't last? Or, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I think yeah. that that can be a vulnerable situation, I'm saying. But for the most part, totally. for the most part, it, thankfulness, being grateful has so many benefits, right? It, it changes us neurologically. We, become, we can become addicted to thankfulness and gratefulness. It sends all the happy hormones throughout our body so that our 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 body is functioning better our brains functioning better you know what i mean and then we can live our lives and then also what what an article was saying is that is that it makes you uh you were talking about it it makes you more resilient as mm-hmm. well right. towards facing the things that you're going through like so, pain or stress or, mm-hmm. yeah yeah exactly so that you actually have um the power to overcome those things when you're actually grateful in the midst of pain you know what i mean that's actually something that can get you through yeah. Which is huge. Yeah. I mm-hmm. think that to touch on something you mentioned about gratitude, gratefulness being a vulnerable experience. I think that's true. Um, and Brene Brown uses a phrase called foreboding joy. Mm-hmm. When we're experiencing joy, we have uh, uh, this feeling of what if it's gone all of a sudden, you know, and that keeps us from actually enjoying the thing that's right there. Right. And I think with Brene Brown, um, she gives this example of her looking at her daughter and having this moment. Oh, my dog is barking. <laughs> Stitch! <laughs> Shut up! My goodness. Okay, keep going, Daryl. <laughs> Stitch! <laughs> Welcome. We don't have our own full cl- enclosed podcast, soundproof grateful podcast. For, <laughs> yeah. Grateful for Stitch. Man, Amazon <laughs> coming through in the middle of the podcast. Come on now, somebody. <laughs> Stitch! <laughs> Stop! Hey, I'm grateful for Stitch. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I am so thankful for Stitch. Thank you. Not my dog. That's oh, all I'm saying. <laughs> Roommate's dog. Anyway, keep going, bro. So she's talking about how she had this moment of totally loving and appreciating her daughter. And then all this fear comes in of what if something bad happens to her. Oh, yeah. She was talking about like, 
you're looking at your daughter and you're thinking like, oh, I couldn't love anything more. And then yeah. simultaneously you're experiencing, oh my gosh, it's like the most dreadful thing. I could lose this person. Right. And that took her out of the, of appreciating in that moment. Right. Right. Cause then she wasn't, she was no longer in a pl- in a place of gratitude and gratefulness and loving of her daughter. She, mm. was, she was now in a place of fear. Right. Yeah, and, exactly. Uh, you know, worrying that is going to, uh, it was going to be lost. And so gratitude, um, I think can lead to a place of that, right? Because when we're mm-hmm. grateful for something, we could have the fear that comes in that says, well, what if we don't have it? Mm-hmm. But I think that where, where gratitude really sets in is when we think, well, I have it right now. Mm-hmm. And I'm thankful for that. Right. I'm grateful for having it right now. Right. Even if the peace doesn't stay, right. I'm grateful that I'm experiencing peace in this moment. Right. And I think that can even help dissipate the fear that it's going to leave. Because we're not worried about it leaving anymore. We're just grateful that it's here right now. Right. You know? And I remember uh, I had lost a few family members by the time I um, went to college and graduated high school. And I started practicing thankfulness for the time that I did have with them. So mm. I, would, I would thank God for the time that I had with my dad. And I would say his full name. And the time that I had with my sister. And I'd say her full name. And the time mm. that I had with my brother. And I'd say his full name. And... And then I would thank God for the time that I have right now and the time that I have had with the people in my life. Wow. Up to this point, I'm thankful. God, thank you for the time that I have mm-hmm. had with those that I love and with my family, with my friends. Mm-hmm. Without thinking about the future, just thinking about what has happened so far. Right. And being grateful for what was. Right. And the time that I did have with them before they passed. Mm. And that experience of practicing gratitude actively helped me become uh, more grateful and and look more for moments of appreciating my family here and now. Right. <clears throat> because I was, I was wanting to value the time that I have because I was grateful for it. Mm. And I wanted to appreciate the time with them, right? Appreciate the relationships that I do have and not waste the time that I have with them. I want to make the most of the time that I do have and just be thankful for what is. Yeah. Thankful for what is. Thankful for what is. Yeah. And it, yeah, I, I think that's, you know, that brings up a lot, you know, um, that brings up the idea that, that thankfulness like brings you into the present moment, Mm -hmm. you know, because it allows you to focus on, on what is, it takes you out of a scarcity mindset on all the things you don't have or didn't have, you know what I mean? Or Mm -hmm. are lacking or missing now. And it allows you to set your mind on what you did have with that person that you lost, you know, and then be grateful in that moment, you know? And it's almost, it's counterintuitive almost, you know, it it seems like, why would I be thankful for loss or why would I be thankful? You know what I mean? For someone passing away, you know, or why would I be, you know, and it's not necessarily that you're thankful for them passing away. No, it wasn't being thankful for them passing, but it's thankful for what did exist mm -hmm. for the thing that was there. Mm -hmm. Not that they're not there anymore. Right. And I think it takes courage to be thankful. Mm-hmm. Right. It takes it takes courage to 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 move away from you know obviously grief it it's in stages you know and that's okay yeah, yeah. but it takes courage to move into that thankful state and I, I commend you for doing that to move away from I can't believe they're gone you know what I mean to thank you for the time I'm thankful for the time that I did have with them you know yeah. mm-hmm. and that's kind of like the whole thing when you know someone passes it's like no we're celebrating their life versus like you know, you are mourning that they're gone, you know, but you also want to celebrate their life. You know what I mean? You right. celebrate the time that you had with them. You celebrate, you know, what they did in your life. You celebrate the moments that, that you had, you know, which, which changes, changes a lot on a, on a lighter level, on more of like a family level. It, it makes, um, it makes you more present and it allows you to experience people in your life, even relationally a, a, a lot more fully, mm-hmm. you know? Cause, mm-hmm. cause when you're always focused on, I don't know, say in like an unhealthy relationship, you know, or a toxic relationship, a codependent relationship, right? It's like, I need to be with that person. Right. And, and oftentimes it's always, I need more, right? There's like even a scarcity mm-hmm. mindset mm-hmm. of like, mm-hmm. you're not doing enough or I need more of you or I need more time with you or, you know what I mean? All of these different kinds of things. And that can lead to unhealthy dynamics, yeah. codependent, just terrible stuff. Instead of, it, it's like, instead of you only have an hour to hang out with me tonight. You know what I mean? Right, it's right. like, oh, I get an hour with you? 
You know, that that changes the entire experience because if if you even come into a relationship with a mindset, I only have an hour with you, guess what that hour is going to be? It's probably not going to be, <laughs> be very good. Yeah, no. that hour is probably going to be trash. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Or, you know, in families, like, oh, like, you know, I've n- noticed that this happens. You know, obviously I deal with youth students. You know, it's like it, students start to get older and they start to move away from their parents a little bit more. Stop, stop being as reliant on their parents and parents kind of get frustrated with that kind of stuff. And so they can focus on all the, like, my my kids growing up, so I want to control them. I want to lock them down. I want them, mm. like, to bring them in. But actually a thankful attitude is like oh like they're home for 30 minutes you know what i mean like to hang out maybe i could do this with them right but when you're always focused on what you don't have in that scarcity mindset not thankful that you're even even that your kid is growing and he's blossoming and you do still have a little bit of time with them and you get to lead them in a different way and have a different relationship with them i know i kind of just went into a lot of different the examples of this right but that all can come through thankfulness yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Through being thankful for what you do have, not in the scarcity mindset of what isn't, which yes, which is right. a, a very a very vulnerable, a very present emotion to feel. You know. Yeah. When we live out of what isn't, we're living out of a lot of stress and scarcity and mm-hmm. and fear and complaining, and we're not actually experiencing what is. Right. So gratitude does bring us into the present. Right. Focusing on. The things we're grateful for brings us back into reality. Oh, like, there goes gravity. Right oh, there goes gravity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a, I think it is a huge tool, uh, not just a tool, but you know, it is a mindset, but I think mm-hmm. it can be a tool to bring us back. It's something that we can, mm-hmm. nothing stops anybody from being grateful. Right. You know, it, right. the only thing that stops us from being grateful is ourselves. Right. There's literally at any moment in any day during anything, we can choose gratefulness. That's cool. <laughs> that <laughs> Which is, is crazy. That is actually so cool. Like you have, we have access to being thankful at all times. Mm-hmm. I can be thankful right now. I'm thankful for these mics that make my voice sound sexy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thankful for this table that makes us look good for this back. You know what I mean? I'm thankful for that. I have a house. I'm thankful that I woke up today. Yeah. It's like, whoa, it's like, I'm thankful that I'm hanging out with my buddy and we're doing a podcast. I'm thankful. Like, and already my heart's starting. Yeah. It feels good. You just feel good. Yeah. Life is good. I'm I'm thankful for this stuff. You know, I'm thankful that I'm getting more and more free every single day that I'm growing in wisdom every single day. You know what I mean? That God's teaching me every single day. I have a relationship with God. Woo. You know, <laughs> and then you start. It's just like I just mentioned eight things in my whole, you know, even my countenance. It's like, oh, yeah, whoa. you start feeling good, you start making like better posture, you're yeah. like excited about life. Yeah, it, it totally yeah. changes things. It totally changes things. And, and that's that's the thing, you know, I was thinking about this it, is that, yeah, there's probably a million things that you could complain about, you mm-hmm. know, there, there are, you know, but what fruit has complaining ever produced? You know, right. Unless you're going to do something about it. You know what I mean? And I wouldn't even call that complaining. I would call that problem solving. You know what I mean? For people to actually see a problem and say, this is wrong. This is bad. And and then then they do do something something. about it. That's not complaining. That's doing something about it. Right. Right. But it, it complaining, I would, yeah, I would say it's like having a negative or a pessimistic attitude towards something and having no intention or feeling like you have no power to change it. Right. Right. Yeah. It, it, and it and and I had this experience, you know, uh, I talked about this with our church this past, you know, this past weekend, but about working at Starbucks, you know, when I was working at Starbucks and I was in a toxic kind of work environment and everyone's complaining about, you know, I got to wake up at seven and this person, you know, and I don't even like working here. And I'm like, then why have you been here for 13 years? darling you know <laughs> it's like Dang. you know and uh you know you can kind of get sucked into this complaining mentality you know where where it can be like man this place does really suck there are a lot of rules yeah like i don't really like my shift lead or i don't really like my boss or you know i mean this person can wait another minute or however it is you can get sucked into this complaining and guess what we weren't doing anything about it you know and i, I remember you know eventually god kind of started speaking to me about it and he said aaron don't complain about something that you can change Mm-hmm. Because complaining makes powerless people. Yeah. Right. Yep. It, it, and it is a it's a powerless emotion. It or is. Or it's a powerless expression of emotion. Right. Right. Because you're just you're trying to get out a frustration in something that you feel powerless in. 
right? Because right. you, if there's no intention on doing anything or changing anything, right? Then you, it is just complaining, and you are separating yourself from the issue where you have no influence over the issue. Exactly, is that's what you're conceding to. Exactly, and and at the least, you don't have to work here. Right. <laughs> you know, and that's what I realized. And then finally, you know, I, I decided to quit. Best decision I ever made, you know, but but there was there was actually, you know, that thought that's like, I can't complain about something that I can actually change. I don't need to work here. I don't need to complain about working out mm-hmm. up at 7 a.m. If I don't need to work, wake up at 7 a.m. Wait, I actually do have dreams and I do have things, some things set up and I am going to go after some of my dreams that I have, go into ministry, DJ, do whatever, right? And then I actually decided to be powerful, stop complaining about something, say peace out and do what I want to do and actually be joyful, be thankful, you know? And, and I'm grateful for that revelation, you know what I mean? But yeah. but the, the goal of what you know I, I was trying to say is that it, it it doesn't lead to powerful decision making, right? Right. Thankfulness in in being present and saying this is what is allows you to make a decision from what is and what you're grateful yes. for, for even having a job, for even being able in your own body to wake up at 7 a.m. Though those customers are annoying, you know what I mean? For even the relationships that you can have with them for that little two minute spur or whatever, or how can I make someone's day and then you get intentional about that and you're thankful for, yeah, even have a job that pays the bills even if you're living paycheck to paycheck you know it's like hallelujah i'm getting paid you know to Uh uh to some degree and that changes everything i could imagine someone and and i wasn't in this mindset when i was there you know i mean i definitely got sucked into the negativity of it you know but like when you come in thankful you come in you end up being joyful about your job that allows you to do your job in a better way. Mm-hmm. You end up treating customers better. You end up being more productive because I do believe thankfulness makes you more productive. Guess what? Next thing you know, you have a promotion coming your way because you see someone, you know what I mean? Because someone sees you like, you know, being thankful and taking care of things and getting business done, right? You get promoted, you carry in the same aspect and then you actually start making it. But complaining, it does nothing and it produces nothing. You end up right. in the same spot anyway, still complaining, still doing the same thing. It is, a, it's a zero, bro. Yeah. Bing, zero. Complaining is disempowering. It's disempowering. Yeah. Gratitude, being grateful is an empowering, Right. it's an empowering emotion to feel. Right. Because then even just when earlier when you were mentioning all these things you're grateful for, you start feeling energized. Right. That's an empowering experience because now you're ready to do something. Right. Right. You don't, you're not super down and, and weighed down by everything. Mm. You're not feeling defeated. But when we feel victorious, we Mm. start going after things and experiencing more victory. Right. Yeah. But it can start from feeling victorious before we've done anything just because we're grateful. Yeah. And the, the power, the empowering that happens is because we're recognizing what we do have, right? The power that I do have to make a decision. Mm-hmm. I'm grateful that I can make a choice. I'm right. grateful that I have freedom right now. Right. Grateful for the car that I have to go drive to wherever I need to drive to to get done whatever I need to get done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When we start being grateful for what we do have, we stop complaining. Right. But then we also recognize the power that we have to make a difference. Yeah. It's a game changer. It's an absolute game changer. Totally. Absolute game changer. And I, I think that's, you know, that's what God intends for us you know what i mean to have a a a grateful heart a grateful mind you know Mm -hmm. what i mean to step into these things i love the partnership between like neuro like neuroscience psychology and like biblical truths Mm -hmm. you know because because all of these things are partnering it's like we're realizing now or whenever that study was done that that being grateful and being thankful improves your sleep, improves your immune system, sends mm-hmm. dopamine and serotonin, ha- serotonin, serotonin, happy hormones into your body, like regulates how all this different kind of stuff. Right. We're realizing this now, what the Bible's been saying forever. You know, it's like Paul's like, set your mind on whatever is pure and whatever yeah, is, what true is true and whatever is, is noble. noble. He's like, good. rejoice always. He actually says, it was at first just always. I, again, I say rejoice. Again, I say, <laughs> again, I say, <laughs> again, I say, again, I say, rejoice. rejoice. In the Lord always. You know that song? No, I don't know. You don't song. know that song? Uh-uh. Oh, dang. Is that Hill song? Like, no, no. I don't think so. But I think he, it's like a gospel song. Uh, <laughs> like an older gospel song. I will rejoice in the Lord always, always. You know that song? Well, no. Probably not because I just made it up right now. Bing, bop, boom. <laughs> First, Thess- First Thessalonians, Thessalonians. Mm-hmm. 518 says, Be thankful in all circumstances, 
for this is God's will for you. Ever wanted to know God's will? Be thankful. Be thankful. If you're wondering what God's will is, be thankful. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That makes it pretty simple. Be thankful in all circumstances. Right. I was listening to this monk talk on TED Talk. I don't remember his name. David something. Yeah. uh And uh, he was talking about gratitude, gratefulness, and how gratefulness is about the opportunity that we have to enjoy something whenever it's presented to us, like a gift. Mm. He also talked about how we feel more grateful when we receive something that we did nothing to deserve, right? It's something that we did nothing to do. We didn't do anything to gain it. We didn't do anything to earn it. It's just been given to us. Mm. And in those moments, we are filled with gratitude, right? Those Mm. are where we have prime opportunity to be grateful because we weren't working for it as as much as it was just a gift. Mm. And then he talks about how every moment that we experience, we've done nothing to earn. We've done nothing to gain that. We're just in the moment. The moment has been given to us. It's a gift. Isn't that weird? And every moment we (laughs) have the opportunity to be grateful. We have the opportunity to be grateful in every moment. And if we miss the moment to be grateful, there's always another opportunity. <laughs> right. Because there's going to be a moment after that and a moment after that and a moment after that. Right. And a moment after that. So there's always opportunity <laughs> for us to be grateful. <laughs> you put me in a Zen state right now. I don't know what it is <laughs> about you talking right now. It was, it was Maybe Father it was the, David, whatever. Yeah, it was, the, it was the monk anointing or something like that. Every time you say moment, I just like get more, the moment. And more present. <laughs> yeah. And that, but that's what he was talking about is that every moment is a chance for us to be grateful right for the opportunities mm. that exist in this moment right now right. and if we miss this moment hey that's okay we have another moment hey right. if we miss that one it's okay we have another moment yeah and there's there's so much uh grace tied in with the way he was talking about it as well mm. you know if we're struggling to be grateful hey it's okay there's another moment that we can be grateful for right and not being guilty about not being grateful for things <laughs> right we're like oh I've sh- i should be grateful for this i should be grateful for that right but i'm struggling or i'm hurting or whatever you know but hey it's okay there's right. another moment that's going to come that we can be grateful for yeah and that that same study showed that like you know when we lead from that guilt even that that's a problem you know mm. like even the like being in a grateful attitude versus being in like a guilty attitude, it actually releases you to like give, you know, to yeah, different causes. Yeah. It makes you more giving. It makes you more able to uh, to pour out onto other people, you know what I mean, in every moment. So so that's interesting as well to stay in that place because I, I think there's a lot of things um, – coming at us to to take us away from being thankful take us away from being grateful you know there's fear that comes in that keeps us from being grateful it's like i could like i don't know i could be excited to do this podcast and then i'm like yeah this is so awesome i'm so grateful and then a fear comes in like but what if you don't know what to say you know i mean it's like you know Mm -hmm. totally puts like a dampener on it totally like it's just like oh now i'm not even excited to do something that i love Right. You know? Yeah. And so there's a, there's a lot of things. And I think, um, I think it's a, it's a, it can be a fight, you know, to be grateful to, to do what that, that monk is saying, you know what I mean? To, to rewire our brain. Cause our brains are wired in a lot of ways towards pessimism. You yeah. Know what I mean, or we towards, talked about it in our fear series. I think how we were right. kind of wired to look out for the bad things, look out for the dangers so that afraid. way we can survive. So we can, try to continue on right? right we look out for the things we want to avoid right and and depending on how long you've been doing that for i mean you have to unlearn a lot of stuff you know mm-hmm. and that could be a difficult thing and and sometimes what i've realized this too is sometimes i start practices like starting to be thankful and at first it feels maybe maybe forced hmm. you know mm-hmm. where it feels like uh i'm just doing something that's not really effective it's not really working you know right, what i mean right. it's almost like uh feels like putting oil on the top of water or something like that you know hmm. it's like this is just surface stuff it's not really getting into my heart you know right. it's like i could wake up i could do a gratitude journal or i could just say thank you for different things in my house or something like that and it doesn't really impact me but um yeah you know, i had a little phrase this past week it's like big trees big trees come from little seeds mm-hmm. you know and um and if you want to be a, a tree of a grateful person, it's about in every moment, like that monk was talking about, um, 
putting a little seed of thankfulness or a little seed of gratefulness into that moment. And at first you might not see the growth, yeah. you know, it's going to be a little by little process, you know, where, but eventually your mind starts to catch on. Hey, this brother, <laughs> this brother is putting in some grateful seeds and not allowing me to think in this negative pessimistic way, you know, and, and then it, it will fight you. Your brain will fight you, you know, uh, sometimes, yeah. you know, but still continuing and pressing on and doing that little by little planting those seeds. I think eventually you'll start to see that growth. You'll see your mind start to create new channels and pathways for that flow. Yeah, literally. That flow. Your, literally. Yeah. Your brain yeah. is changing. Mm -hmm. Your brain. Yeah. Your brain will change, which will change your whole physiology, physiology, physiology. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It will change like the, the way you posture yourself and the way that you actually live in life and the, the, all of those different kinds of things, you know? And, and it is a, yeah, it's just a, it's just a powerful thing. Mm -hmm. Just being grateful. It, it it's a gift from the Lord. I truly believe it's a gift from the Lord to be grateful. Yeah. You know what I mean? To be thankful. It's a tool to overcome pessimism and, and negativity. It's like uh, a state of being that you eventually like enter into. It's like the will of God for your life. You know, that's, I, yeah. uh, that's, a huge, <laughs> that's pretty huge. You know what I mean? For that to be included in what the will of God is for our lives. Yeah. That's right. crazy. When, when I hope we, I didn't just ramble, but <laughs> no, no, that was good. And this this week I was thinking about because I knew we were going to be talking about gratitude. I was thinking about it more and want and it, realizing I want to practice this more often because right. I don't do it as much as I can. Mm -hmm. I mean, every moment is an opportunity to be grateful. Right. I don't know how many moments throughout the day I just stop and say thank you for this moment. Right. <laughs> you know, I'm grateful for this moment. God, thank you for this moment. And look for the opportunities to be grateful for other things. Mm. You know, in this moment right now, what are the things I can be grateful for? Right. And just pause. Stop. <laughs> this is something else that the monk said. He said this is a practice he encouraged people to do. Very simple. To stop. To look around. And then to go. And he said it's what we do when we're little kids. We're taught to do that when we cross the street. Mm. Right. We stop. We look around. And then we go. So stop. Take notice of the things that you can be grateful for. Mm. And then with that energy that you get from being grateful, live out of that place. Right. Go with gratitude. Right. Go from a place of gratitude. And so having that practice of where we just stop, be grateful, and then keep going. Mm. He was talking about how he put little stickers on uh, when he was in Africa and he was grateful for having moments of electricity because they didn't have electricity all the time and mm -hmm. or running water. And so he put little stickers next to the electricity, like the little switch that said stop. And by the fountain, by the, uh, sorry, the faucet. So every time he would turn the light on, he would stop and he'd just be, give thanks for the light. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but having that practice, I wonder how much that would change my own life and, and, and what the things that I start noticing throughout the day. Right. I earlier this week I was walking around um and I came across this tree. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, everything love, you're saying right now is put me in a zen state. I bro. love looking at trees. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was just walking. I was walking and looking at nature and I saw this tree, walked up to this tree. I was really close. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of standing under it and it was like this dead tree is looking up through the dead branches, all the dead twigs, you know, everything and just thinking about what it looks like and just taking it in and seeing how unique it is you know that there's no other tree like this tree right here <laughs> has its own bark has its he own was starting a relationship and, with this tree <laughs> <laughs> and then i kind of i was getting ready to, to walk away and i looked away from the tree and i saw a bunch of green leaves like a bunch mm. of little green leaves on one of the branches i was like whoa this tree isn't just dead and then I looked back at the tree and I saw all these little green leaves everywhere. I was oh. like, what the, how did I miss all these before? Wow. But I was focusing on the dead branches because I expected it to be a dead tree. Mm. And so I was looking at this dead tree. And then as soon as I saw the green leaves, I saw green leaves all over the place. They wow. were behind the tree. They're right on the edges of where I was just looking at. But I didn't notice the green leaves until those ones were right in my face. Wow. Right? And then I started noticing ones that were further away or kind of off in the background or off to the mm. side. And gratitude kind of acts like that. Whenever mm. we see something that we're grateful for, it can perpetuate gratefulness. Right. Where we start seeing more things to be grateful for. 
Right. When maybe it, right in the moment, we don't see anything to be grateful for. But as soon as we can see something, it kind of helps us to start seeing more things right. that we can be grateful for. My wife, Brittany, started doing a, a gratitude journal actually at night. For, she's been doing it for, I don't know, maybe a couple months now. But she said that mm. when she started doing it, it helped her to see more things throughout the day that she is grateful for. Right. You're like intentional about seeing yeah. things that are good. So now she's thinking, what can I write down in my journal tonight? Right. What are the things that I'm grateful for throughout this day? Mm. Or at the end of a day, sometimes she'll come to a point where she doesn't have a lot on her mind that she's grateful for about the day. But she'll think of something, she'll write it down, and then all of a sudden she'll have all these pages worth of stuff that she's grateful for. Right. When in the beginning, before she sat down to take that moment, she didn't know. She's like, what is what happened today that I could be grateful for? I don't know. Is right. there anything? Oh, there's this one thing. You know, and she writes it down and then she suddenly starts realizing all these other things that she can be grateful for. Right. It's like a thankfulness snowballing effect. Yeah. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. It's like a catalyst, that that one thing. I, I love that, Daryl. You know, what a what a childlike thing to do. You know what I mean? To just start noticing and and think that it comes back to the thankfulness. Yeah. You, when you're present, you become so much more thankful. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? You're just looking mm-hmm. at a tree and then it reminds you of like life, you know? And I love that you can get stuff out of nature like that that can just teach you about life you know it's that's all cool it's all around <laughs> us like the truth is all around us but yeah what a childlike thing i think um i think we can get really entitled especially where we live in yeah, america yeah. you know it's like it's like i never had to think about running water you know what i mean i never right. had to think about shelter i never had to think about having food um you know three meals a day even you know mm-hmm. or like you know plumbing that's that's working and showers hot showers hot water my gosh you know like uh, i don't know the stats on it but i assume most of the world lives without hot water to wash their right. yeah, to yeah. wash their bodies with mm-hmm. you know and mm-hmm. so we can especially in america we could become so entitled um of these things are just like these things are just normal you know what if you started thanking god that you had a running toilet, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. and yeah. that's, it sounds crass, you know what I mean? Or, but, or that, you know what I mean? That you had hot water that you, you know, um, that what you if, had shelter, you had a roof that wasn't leaking, you know, yeah, that it wasn't yeah. tin and straw and, you know, clay that you didn't have to make your own house. And, you know, you didn't have yeah. to go out and hunt and gather food today. You got to go to the grocery <laughs> store, an air conditioned grocery store, right. To pick whatever food that you wanted. You know, right, yeah, and huge. and that's that's huge stuff. That is stuff to be so thankful for. You know, what I mean, to observe. I love that to stop and just be like, wait a second. Instead of rushing into Ralph's right now, I'm just gonna be thankful for Ralph's. Right. You know, <laughs> I'm just gonna be thankful for yeah. Albertsons or thankful for Vons and Costco. God bless Costco. I'm buying in bulk, baby. You know, <laughs> but to, uh-huh. to to stop and to be thankful that you could even go into these air conditioned super malls. You know, what I mean, these supermarkets, and and get all the food that you need and come back. You know, I mean, especially where we live to your to a you know, 500, 600, 700,000 dollar house. You know what I mean? Like, ooh, I'm not saying everybody has it easy. I'm not saying this is for everybody, but but I am saying in America, for the most part, we we pretty privileged. You know what I mean? Oh, like totally. we're, we're, yeah. we have a lot going for us. You know, a lot of things that we don't even have to think of. And um, us not having to think of those things leads us to complain about a lot of things that don't matter. Yeah, You know what I mean? We complain about the followers on Instagram. We complain about the cashier at Albertsons who was too slow, you know, right. or, you know, who said a mean remark at one point in time, you know, or <laughs> whatever. We complain about how dirty something is, or we complain mm-hmm. about our family or our husband not, you know, taking out the trash, or we can complain about a million things, but there's a million and one things to be thankful for, you yeah, know? Yeah. So it's like, it, it really is our choice to be thankful. Yep. And if it's our choice to be thankful, one, that's a very powerful thing because you actually take start taking charge of your life. You know what I mean? And you actually start choosing, choosing to be thankful and choosing your own emotional well-being and strength. And then it's a God revelation. I, it's a God revelation to realize complaining is not useful. Right. <laughs> what is complaining ever accomplished? No, there's no fruit in it. It's like, I was like, problem solving? Yes. Complaining? 
Well, that just makes me sad. <laughs> complaining right. it complaining just makes has me... never made me feel better. No, it's never made me feel better about anything. <clears throat> what good does it do? And and to actually realize, to see and uncover beneath the complaining and then to be aware enough, self-aware to say, you know what? I'm complaining right now. I'm going to stop doing that. I'm going to focus on what was good yeah. about my, my trip out or the, having to take my kids to soccer practice or to, you know, or to their baseball practice or having to even be in traffic. Sometimes I'm in traffic and I'm just like, thanks God that I have more time to be in the car with you. (laughs) You know what I mean? Instead of like, I just need to get home. I need to go. Well, first off, like, well, I'm single. I don't have a, you know, I don't have a family. So why do I need to get home in the first place? You know? So like, as far as like, what, yeah, what am I going to do? You know, (laughs) I'm a lonely, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. (laughs) But, and then secondly, it's like more time in traffic just means I have more time to spend with God. I have more time to listen to music that I like. I have more time to think and ponder and and grow. It's like it's actually a, uh, it could actually be a good time for me if I'm actually thankful about it. Yeah, and there's yeah. something that so on this TED talk with the monk, <laughs> he mentioned how it's not that we want to, that we need to be grateful for everything because there are things that happen that are terrible. You right. know, there are really bad things that happen in the world, really bad things and painful experiences that we go through, but. In every op- in every moment, there is opportunity to be grateful. Mm. In you don't have to be grateful for everything, but in everything, there is the opportunity to be grateful. That's good. You don't have to be grateful for traffic itself, right. but you can be grateful that in traffic you have more time to be with God or to mm-hmm. be with whoever you're in the car with. You know, to to ponder some things or to listen to some music that you really love mm-hmm. listening to, and those are the things that you're grateful for in the midst of the the pain of traffic <laughs> right yeah yeah and it's the, it, it's not about it trying to ignore the bad things mm-hmm. but about s- not allowing the bad things to eclipse the good that exists totally because that is what leads to complaining and that's what complaining leads to as well right you know they're reciprocal they go back and forth right that it, it, the complaining just blinds us to the good right we're mm-hmm. not giving ourselves the chance to see what is good right when we are grateful, we can still acknowledge that things are bad or there are not good things. But yeah, you can still grieve. You can still be sad. Yes, right, you right. Know what I mean, it's not like a, a you know, you're cutting out all other emotions because it's just like, I'm just being grateful. Like, <laughs> you're <getting> like this. <laughs> I'm just grateful for everything. You know, yeah. it's like, no, bro, you're depressed. Like, <laughs> you need some help. You need some therapy, you know? Yeah. But yeah. there are those moments to be grateful. There's opportunity to be grateful. Right. Yeah. And then you could even see like, okay, well, maybe I'm not. I'm not grateful for the anxiety necessarily that I'm feeling, but I'm, I'm grateful that it's creating endurance in me. Right. You know, Mm -hmm. I'm not grateful that that relationship fell apart, but I'm grateful for what I learned from the relationship. Right. So it's, it is that idea of, you know, I mean, you don't have to be grateful for everything, but in everything, there's an opportunity to be grateful. Yeah. And everything rejoice, be thankful in every circumstance. Mm -hmm. This is God's will for you. Yeah. And God, that's so awesome. <laughs> yeah. Because God wants what's best for us. Mm-hmm. God's always wanting what's best for us. Totally. And his will is for us to be thankful, to be grateful, because that's actually what's best for us. Right. It's actually best for us to always maintain an attitude of gratefulness. Right. And to 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 practice that gratefulness. That is actually going to be more beneficial for us than sitting in complaint. Right. Is if we can be grateful. Yeah, he's a good father. He doesn't want us to complain about things and he wants us to feel energized and powerful. And obviously he cares even about the happy hormones that are going through our body. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He cares about the happy hormones. He cares about our health. He cares about our bodies and and how we're operating, you know, physically. Like he cares about all of that stuff, you know? And that's why there are those commands, you know? A lot of the commands, you know, it says, that's a command. Rejoice always. Again, I say rejoice. rejoice. You know what I mean? <laughs> Jesus is like, do not worry about tomorrow. You know, it's like, whoa, that's crazy, you know? And then he has all of these, all of these different things. You know, I have, you know, the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy, but I've come to give life and life abundantly. You know what I mean? Well, you got to be setting your sights on an abundant life in order to live into that abundant life. Like you got to be thankful that God's given you an abundant life. You know, he says, I say these things so that your joy might be full. You know what I mean? So, so this, this thing, and then he, th- he modeled thanking God, you know what I mean? As he breast, the, <laughs> breast, blessed the, bless the bread and, and then thanked God. I love, there's this moment where he's like rejoicing over the children of yeah. Israel or whatever. And it says that he was like rejoicing in the Holy spirit, you know what I mean? Because he was like, God, you've given this wisdom to little children and kept it from the wise, you know, yeah. <laughs> which is an interesting thing, interesting thing to be rejoicing about. But, <laughs> um, 
but we won't go into that. But yeah, he models this this yeah. thankful this thankful heart, you know, this this heart of gratitude, and um, and that and he's a model for us to live into, you know. Mm-hmm. He's our father, so yeah, yeah. There is a in one of the articles I was reading, they mentioned a a practice or an assignment thing that they would give to people. To, in order to practice gratitude and, w- and what it was was identifying someone in your life that you appreciate that you're grateful for but maybe you haven't thanked them in a way that is fitting to how gra- how grateful you are for them mm. so find somebody in your life that you are grateful for but you have not explicitly expressed that gratitude right. towards then write them a letter handwrite them a letter and then find a time to give them that letter and talk about the things that you're grateful for. Mm. And they did, we did this assignment with a bunch of people it, because they wanted to see the difference that it was making in people's lives. And with every right. person that did it, they experienced, they, they lifted, it lifted up their spirits, they experienced less stress, mm. and they were able to start practicing this gratitude. Right. So if you have, if you're wondering how you can start practicing gratitude, yeah. I think that active gratitude is the key that when we are actively participating in being grateful actitude actitude exactly (laughs) because i can be grateful for everything oh yeah i'm grateful for everything in my life you know that's what every thanksgiving circle i'm so grateful grateful hashtag grateful it's like (laughs) but being specifically grateful actively giving thanks for something right find somebody that you're grateful for write them a letter and and find a time where you can give them that letter but then also communicate to them directly from your mouth to mm-hmm. their ears <laughs> right. and talk about what it is that they have done or who they've been in your life that you're right. that you appreciate yeah and that's one practice of of gratitude yeah and that'll help you in it will help them yeah you know that goes that goes both ways um yes. something that that i try and and do and i don't have it perfectly every day but something that i try to do is um is i wake up in the morning and i say good morning jesus and I, I say thank you, you know, that that I woke up today. You know, like mm. I start my day with thankfulness. You know what I mean? I start my day with the recognition. I try to start my day with the recognition that that I'm alive. Mm. You know? Mm-hmm. And on a base level, if nothing else, I woke up this morning. <laughs> yeah. I woke up this morning. <laughs> I woke up this morning. That's chance the rapper. But um but yeah, on a base level, and and what I try and do is I just kind of say whether it's in my own mind or it's out loud, I just make kind of like little thankful declarations throughout the day, you know, just thank you God that you know, like I said, thank you God that I'm alive, thank you that you love me, you know, yeah, uh, thank you for my friends, thank you for my family, and I just do that. I don't keep a journal per se, um, just because I'm not really like a journaler. Maybe it's something that I adopt later on, but for me, it's more of a um just keeping a a record almost like a tally you know like in my own mind wow i'm really grateful for this person and then if i am grateful expressing that gratitude like you were saying Mm -hmm. so like i I love doing that too so if i have like a grateful thought about somebody i will text them in that moment and be like hey i just want to let you know i'm so grateful for you for the most part i do that you know i mean like i just want to let you know that i love you like you've been such a help to me you know i mean that kind of stuff i I love doing that um doing that for people and then creating that making that into a practice you know i mean doing that doing that not just i would say don't just do it at night you know or don't just do it in the morning i I think that's helpful but to maintain gratitude throughout the day yeah like you said for that monk said take a moment to stop look around become present with your surroundings and be like whoa i'm thankful that i'm here you know to take moments throughout your day to 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 step away and to practice gratitude and I think that a a lifestyle of practicing gratitude will create those neural pathways again, will create a heart or a spirit of gratefulness, you know? And yeah. then, yeah. And then that, that totally changes and reorients the way you live your life, you know? So that's huge. 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 Anything else, Daryl? I think that's it. I think that's it, Daryl. That's gratitude. I'm grateful for you doing this podcast with me. And we are grateful 
uh, that you joined us on this episode yes, of Your Brain on God, 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 God. 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 Yeah. We hope that you guys got something out of this. We we, we hope that you uh, grow in gratitude, grow in thankfulness. Uh, make sure to follow us on iTunes podcast, on Spotify podcast, on YouTube, uh, on Instagram, Your Brain on God. We even have a TikTok now, okay? Your Brain on God TikTok. I don't really understand it, hey, but we got one. But it works. But it works, you know? You get, yeah, and it's pretty cool. Anyway, uh, way addicting. TikTok is the devil. Anyway, no. <laughs> just kidding. But yeah, I hope that um, that you guys grow in gratitude. We absolutely love you. Yeah, we love you. Any final words, Daryl? Before I <laughs> shoot, shoot you. <laughs> this grateful. is the end for Daryl Daniels. For the life that I've lived so far. So grateful. You guys are awesome. Have an amazing week. We'll see you next week on Your yep. Brain on God. Peace see you out. See you next week. Yep. <laughs>